Well, I know that God is doing real good stuff. Keeps doing it. And Saturday, we got a chance to interact with people at La Haya, Love and Hope in Action, and talk about Jesus freely in kind of a relaxed atmosphere, you know. So uh, I just want to just talk a little bit about that today. And uh, after our preaching time, study time, uh, where we had Brian there, uh, many overheard are speaking about Jesus. And I think that's probably the primary kind of a first century way. You know, how do you think about what, what they did in the first century and how the gospel was spread. And I think it's just people overhearing your life. And I think this is really a great opportunity for evangelism. To study more and read about Jesus is really to examine God's manifestation upon the earth. His touchdown, you know. <laughs> to borrow that from NASA, you know. We reached touchdown at the lunar uh, surface. Really, to study about Jesus is to examine this manifestation of the Lord, of God, you know. Because man has this blind spot. It's really inborn, and he has a blind spot to this undefined power of God's love. And I think you see this in a lot of atheists, a lot of celebrated atheists who seem to have all the answers. And Paul points out something here in Colossians 1.27 that I think we all should look at. And that's a phrase, and you know how we love phrases. We like, like to talk about these phrases. He, said, he talks about it and says, The mystery is the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if it's a mystery, it's a mystery to all those that are unbelievers that look at this thing and they say, Well, uh, how do you believe in somebody you can't even see? And I think Colossians tells it the best. He, he talks about the manifestation of the invisible God. So somebody says, hey, let, let me see God. You know, if you guys are so smart, let me see. <laughs> well, he's the manifestation of the invisible God who has delivered. Now check this out. In Colossians 1.13, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And I love that word translated because it's taking us from a language we do not know and interpreting and re rearranging it and repeating it into a language that we do know. Let me say that again. It's taking a language translation. If we uh, talk about the definition of translation, we see that it's taking us from a language we do not know and bringing us into a language that we can understand. So in the spirit, in the spirit context, we see that here's something that we do not understand, and yet through Christ, we are able to understand, to know, and to have fellowship with the eternal God, the creator of the universe. We're able to see this in our own nature. You know, our, our, we got a sin nature, right? Everybody agrees on that. But he's translated us, changed our hearts into the kingdom or the realm of his dear son. And that includes the new nature that redirects, catch that now, redirects our inner man. It's, it's healing, it's love, it's joy, it's peace in us that we never had before. Love and understanding, long-suffering long or patience, goodness, faith, giving us all this fruit of the Spirit. And it's all contained in this mystery. That's why it's very hard to come knock heads with atheists today. Why? Because they got this inborn blind spot that we all have. They cannot see because it has not been translated to them by the Holy Spirit. That in Jesus Christ we have redemption through his blood, which is characteristically and biblically and historically the payment. The payment is blood. Okay? You have to pay with your blood. So let's talk a little bit about this manifestation, the time of knowing Jesus. It's, it's when you know that you know Christ. 
in the manifestation, uh, also called the epinosis, the born-again experience, the epiphany, if you're Catholic. If you're Methodist, it's the blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. The conversion experience, the Damascus Road experience, the come-to-Jesus moment, you know, his revelation. It comes like the wind, Jesus says in John 3. From where? How? You don't know where the wind comes from, how it goes. I mean, come on. It is what we call a mystery. Going back to Colossians 1.27. <laughs> that's, that's what we started with, right? The mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Well, the atheist is going to ask, why won't the Bible stuff go away? Why don't you just go away? Better ask, why won't the wind stop blowing? Why won't the earth stop turning? Well, God bless you this week. I hope this uh, opens some eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>